I would imagine by the time you left football altogether, you pretty much had a PhD with how to work with people because that seemingly can sum everything up that you did is how to, to basically run a business and work with other people. Absolutely. And great point, Steve. I, I think that professional sports and, and really sports in general, you, you're able to um, learn malleability, adaptability. You're able to adjust to different situations. As an example, as a, as a football player, I, I grew up in Los Angeles, but, you know, I played for the Chicago Bears. I can't control the weather. All I, ha- all I can do is control how I adjust to the conditions that everyone has to play in. And part of it's attitude, part of it's preparation. And, and once you learn those skills, you're able to, to really go into any situation and have success because you, you've learned to prepare yourself for other contingencies. Sports is a great tool for preparing people to be able to adjust to whatever situation they're they're faced. Disappointment, I've been traded four times in my career and those experiences, um, they're fearful at first. The first time I was traded, I was was completely afraid and where am I going? I'm going to the other side of the country. But you learn over time and experience that the things that you don't know aren't negatives. They're just things that you haven't experienced before that if you approach it the right way and prepare, those can be even better experiences. And I've I've learned over time to appreciate every experience as unique, but also learn from from them to help myself for the next challenge that faces me down the road. And I think that my football career, having played for so many teams and organizations, I appreciate each one for what they were. I played for some great organizations and I played for some not so great organizations. But when you go to a a team or an organization that isn't as well run, you appreciate the one that you came from and don't take it for granted. Um, And at the same time, when you don't, when you play for an organization that is not as well run as before, you learn to rally around your teammates and, and say, we can make the most of this situation in spite of what we don't have. We can make most of what we do have. So, you know, there are a lot of lessons that sports teach us for, for how to be successful as an athlete, but also how we can carry it on to the things that we do outside of sports. Absolutely. And out of everything that you just said, what I felt like I heard was it's all about your mindset. You know, if you get traded, it can be this negative downward spiral of, well, I, I have this fear of what's happening. This team obviously didn't really like me if they're getting rid of me. Like all these crazy things can start going on in your head, whether they're true or not. But instead it's, hey, this team really wanted me. I don't have control over this. It's happening to me. I can at least control my reaction to it. And then by framing things in the right way, this thing doesn't necessarily need to have a positive or negative connotation to it. You can attach the positive. Exactly. You know, I was very, uh, I'm, I'm, I still am, but, but when I was a player, I had this ritual of always talking to my mom. I would call her the day before every football game. When I was in college, when I was in the pros, we had this routine that we, we go through. And every, whenever, you know, most of the time I was playing, I was, I was single. I was just, it was just me. I've been married for 20 years, but but in my playing days, my mom was that confidant. And so I remember, you know, during a time when I, you know, when you're during the trading process, you really don't know until it's already happened. The transaction's already taking place. And I remember uh, not the first time I was traded, but the second time I was traded when I played for the Detroit Lions and was traded to the Green Bay Packers. I remember getting a call early in the morning from the head coach, who was Bobby Ross. He brought me in the office and said, you know, and coaches have a difficult task because they're, they're trying to make the most of a situation to make their team better. As players, you understand that they're trying to do what they felt is best for the team, but it's not always in your best interest. And so he told me, you know, he had a prepared speech. I think something like, well, this is the hardest thing I have to do. I really don't like giving this information, but we're trading you. And there's a pause and I, and I was a bit surprised, but you, you take the information for what it is. And then he said, well, you're going to Green Bay. 
and I, I, I didn't crack a smile because the Green Bay was actually a better team than the Lions at the time. And so I was excited um, in some ways that I was going to a better team. And, and yet you're still disappointed because you, part of you is saying, well, what, what was the, the conditions that I'm no longer part of this organization that you're, you're you know, part of the, the situation is you feel like, well, I'm not a part of the winning equation that you feel is, is going to help you. But at the same time, someone's trading for you, so they must see value in you to, to bring you to their team. So it's all in perspective and all in how you view a situation. But today, you know, the professional work that I do, I just came off of a, a November election cycle where we were involved in six different elections. And we didn't win all of them. We won 80% of them. So, you know, I was telling someone the other day, I said, you know, the, the ones that we didn't win, the elections that we didn't win are the ones that stick in your mind as more so than the ones you did win. And that's kind of like playing sports. You remember the ones that you lost more than you, you the ones you, the games you win because you go in expecting to win. But you, when you lose, you, you're more introspective, you're more careful, you're more um, aware of what are the things that went into this equation of things during a game or during an election campaign that you could have done differently to maybe change the outcome. Um, so all of those things in collective have been learning experiences. And, you know, my mom would tell me, and again, back to, to the, the conversations with my mom were when I got traded, I, I gave her a call and said, well, I'm going to be going to a different team. And she said, Remember, remember this, Glenn, you can control the things that only you can control, but have faith and know that wherever you're headed is going to be where you're supposed to be. And, you know, I took that as, as, a, as great advice from someone who never played a down of football in her life, but yet understood more than any coach I've ever played for is control the things you can control but go into a situation with the best attitude. And, and, and if you do that enough times, you'll, you'll have a good outcome because you will have had the right attitude and mindset, as you described, going into the situation. Mm. It, and, you know, to, to take what you said uh, about winning and losing down to an even more micro level, I'm sure you can remember the drop passes more than the, all the catches that you had. You know, if you know if you were on defense, right, that one missed tackle, you remember. You don't remember the 15 that you just made. I think we right. just always have a bias toward the negative and what we did wrong versus sometimes just soaking in what we did right. But one thing I, I really enjoyed in preparation for for this conversation was watching this five minute video I saw on Vimeo, Glenn's story. And it provided really great insight into how you prepped yourself to go on this journey through the NFL with your mindset of eliminating distractions, being very dedicated to your craft and what you were doing. I'm sure that, you, and I, of course, mom helped you in those phone calls along the way, but it seemed like you very much set yourself up for success. Can you just talk a little bit about how you were able to sustain that course through the gauntlet of playing as a professional athlete, but then even life afterwards? Absolutely. Um, for me, I, I learned as a rookie, uh, a player named Gil Bird. I, I went to a, to a chapel service my rookie year um, before a game. And one of the, the speakers was, a, was a, a former player who's NFL man of the year. His name was Gil Bird. He said, Remember this, if, I, if, you, if you remember nothing from what I've said, remember this. He said, don't trade in what you want the most for what you want for the moment. And that always stuck with me because for me, I was a player who was confident. I was undersized. I didn't have all the physical attributes of a first round draft pick. I was, I, I'm five foot nine on a good day. I'm 165 pounds on a good day. Um, I don't have the, I, I don't look like the prototypical football player, but I understood at an early age, and maybe this was attributed to my parents kind of instilling this is 
use what you have to the best of its ability and use the talent that God gave you. And so for me, it was a, it was a, mind, it was a ma- mindset of, I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to use my, my talents and strengths. And for me, it was speed and quickness. Do that to the best of your ability. And also you're, you're, you're intelligent, you're smart. You're someone that can study and learn something. And by virtue, I learned that at Stanford, I learned that You know, I was fortunate to have coaches like Dennis Green and Bill Walsh, who were really the architects back then. The West Coast offense was the preeminent offensive system in the entire National Football League. So if I could master the West Coast offense, I could play for 40 percent of the teams in the NFL at that point. So that was in my control. I could control that by making sure I understood and didn't make mistakes in practice, and I knew I could be plugged in at different positions, I could be effective. And part of being a professional athlete is, you know, they say the best ability is availability. And being able to, to know what to do and not and to be counted on to make to do the make the right decision were things that I learned early on. Part of that part of that equation is those things I can control. The other things that I can control is how I conduct myself off the field. Eliminating the distractions was a big part of how I felt my success was, was laid. Um, so many players and, and as a rookie, you're kind of, for me, I didn't say a lot. I just kind of observed a lot. And, and lo and behold, year after year, players with great talent didn't have long careers because of personal choices they made in many ways off the field, things that they did, you know, with law enforcement or, you know, relationships or, or not being focused on their, on their sport and their training and their preparation, making mental mistakes in games and practices. And the, all of those things contribute to a perception. All of those things contribute to how, a team sees and views a player. And then for me, I wanted to be perceived as someone who was prepared and ready and able to do anything the team asked me to do. I wasn't a kick returner primarily my first couple of years in the National Football League, but my third year, the team drafted Terrell Davis, a Hall of Fame running back. I wanted to play running back too, but the coach, Coach Mike Shanahan at the time called me in the office and said, Glenn, we really think you could be an effective kick returner for us, in addition to being kind of a change of pace, third down back. And I swallowed my pride and said, okay, coach, I appreciate what you said. I'm going to be the best kick returner you have. And I ended up making the Pro Bowl that year. And I think part of it was because of the way that I approached that difficult situation. Yeah, I'm disappointed, but I'm going to use what he's, the coach has said and make sure that I'm prepared and ready for whatever. And I studied film and I was able to to understand what the objective was for for the kickoff returner. And I ended up having a great year. And and that was really marked the next six or seven years of my career um, as a kick returner. Uh, And that was really attributed to a difficult situation of something that I didn't necessarily want to hear, but but accepting it, not trading in what I wanted the most for what I wanted for the moment, which was I wanted to be the starting running back. But I said, look, okay, I'm not going to be the starter, but I'm going to be the best darn kick returner and third down back you have. And as a result, I had a great, great year, and that propelled me to the success in, in my future years. 